Hi guys, welcome back to How To Tuesdays. Today, um, I know I have a really disturbing look on my face, you'll see it soon. Um, but today, I am basically teaching you the basics and like everything that you need to know from A to Z, from BB cream to CC cream to undertones to shades to um, how to match a shade, formulas, application, like the whole thing. The whole thing, even like how to find the right foundation for you and stuff. Just, just, it's a lot. It's a long process. We're very in depth here, but it's for you guys that don't really know how to do makeup yet or about the beginning stage and you want to learn how to do it and you don't really know how to start, where to go, like what to do, and you're very overwhelmed because there's a lot of stuff out there and everyone seems like a pro and you're just like, I don't know how to do anything. So, yeah, this is for you guys, for those guys. Um, it's very in depth, like I said, so if you really want to know. Oh, you gonna have book. If you really want to learn, um, this is the whole video dedicated to you. If you're new to my channel and you've never seen any of this before, you can watch the very first one that I did, which is like the basics of the, the, the basics of eyeshadow. Um, and uh, we'll put it in a card here, up here, somewhere on the side of the screen. You'll see it. Um, but if you want to watch more videos and watch a whole full playlist of the How To Tuesdays video and the basics of makeup from little, like, little application and not knowing anything all the way to cut creases and looking and these looks and things that you'd never dream of doing because you don't really know how to do makeup that's for you but yeah i'm nicole thank you for watching let's go ahead and get started so we're going to start right away because you know this is a long video it's foundation today and we're going to start with all, all about prepping the skin now um i have moisturized i have eye cream on I, everything's hydrated i have lip balm up everything everything is hydrated and prepped the reason it's so important to moisturize your skin aside from the, the skincare benefits that you obviously have and so you don't look fucking crusty i don't know about you boo i'm not gonna be crusty anyways i like to moisturize for the benefits of my skin and to keep my skin healthy and nice and you know younger for longer amounts of time because you know skincare is key so yeah Skincare is the biggest, like, yes, yes, yes. I'll do a whole skincare video about that. Don't you worry. If it's up, I'll link it. Ouch. Or I'll add a card um, right there. I'll add it in the video. You'll look, you'll see. You'll see. I'm pretty sure you'll find it. Um, but as of now, we're going into foundation. So priming is one of the best things that you could do. A lot of people don't believe in primer because they say it's just, like, something that you don't really need if you prep your skin well with skincare and stuff because there are some moisturizers that work as primers and stuff but the reason we like to prime is because we target different um not issues but like things that we want to improve with our face right okay because they're not issues so for example one of them i'm going to zoom you in okay we're very up close and personal and i just realized we're not able to hold on um, and you can see with my face that I have dark circles, I have hyperpigmentation around my eyes because I'm Latino and um, don't worry, um, I still have these issues. And on top of it, I have some like, you know, texture around here, you can't really see it unless I put powder on, it's not very that visible, it's not very that visible. What? I think, um, uh, aside from that, I've got like a few little like veins. These are like skincare things that we should like we could target and try to improve them. For me, one of the biggest things that I like to improve when I'm putting makeup on is the texture and the large pores, which I have here and like around my nose and the forehead area. I don't know if you can really see them, but yeah, I'm getting so close, it's getting very embarrassing. But yeah, we gotta figure out which ones we want to target and what type of skin that we have now. Now that I've cleaned you back out, because it was very uncomfortable for you to be that close to my face. <laughs> um, um, we have to figure out what kind of skin type we have, and that has to do with skincare, but it also has to do with makeup. You might not think about it at first, but it's very important. So I have combination skin, and the reason I have combination skin is because my cheeks are completely normal, they're pumped, moisturized, normal, nothing, not dry, not oily, nothing, normal. Right? Okay? We got the point. And now, uh, my T-zones are right now here, just between my brows and my nose, it gets oily. Not too oily, but it does get oily after a while. Like at the end of the day, it does get a little bit more oily. You gotta kind of ask yourself, does it get oily? If I wake up at 6 a.m., does it get oily before 12, like midday, or after midday? So you know how oily you get and where you get it, you know? It's kind of figuring out your skincare type if you don't know it already. You might already know it, so just 
skip ahead. I'll tell you a minute right here where I start with the foundation and stuff, but yeah. And then um, you gotta figure out if you have anything else that you want to correct and target. For example, me, it's my enlarged pores and the texture that I sometimes get here around my cheeks. Um, I use a pore eraser. Now, one that I actually really like, and it's very affordable, a drugstore, very beginner friendly. I really like this one. It's the Maybelline Baby Skin one. Instant pore eraser. Now, I really, really like it because it does its job. Now, the best one I've ever tried is the Makeup Forever Step Something. It's a gray tube. It's the pore filler one. Um, that one was a benefit um, pore professional. Those two are the best ones I've ever tried. But for the purpose of this video, I'm showing you things that I use every single day that are, are not expensive and you can just, you know, whack them on. Now, what you've got to figure out is also, does your the foundation last a long time because your skin's drier or is because it gets oilier, does it not last as long? gotta figure that out after you know wearing it you do you do just know if you start if you've only started wearing makeup you're gonna figure it out and if you've already worn makeup you know this already so i want my foundation to look gl my glowier and to last longer so i use the peach primer essence oil it's not a necessary step for me honestly because i moisturize but i like to have that extra like glow and hydration and this one's by nip and fab So yeah, I just rubbed it into my face, I got to be very gentle, I'm usually more like intense with my skin because I'm just used to it, but try to be very gentle, don't cause any premature wrinkles. Next, I'm using the pore primer, this one's almost done, I have a full new tube ready to be used, this is how much I like it, I always like suck up from finishing this, so I kind of, I'm just like on that bit where you just, <clears throat> that's more than enough and this is officially done, I can't squeeze anything else. That face must have been beautiful for you guys to see. Beautiful. Damn it. So I grabbed about that much. It's transparent. And it feels like a weird consistency at first when you're putting primer and stuff on your skin first. But, yeah. I like to apply it around the large pores area. Drag the remaining bits on the high tops of my skin. Now, I know this does the opposite effect of leaving my skin glowy, but at least it has some kind of layer um, to the thing. It kind of like, you know, just helps me a bit. And drag the rest of my cheeks. I don't really apply anything here. Just here, my T-zone, and I'll drag it down because I have some texture, some bumps that you can see with foundation on afterwards. So I like to keep it like that. So now, types of foundation. Now we've got a bunch of foundation that you're just like, where do I even begin? Now, for an everyday to day basis type of thing that you would want to go for, is for an everyday, I would say go for a drugstore one. Because um, you're using it every day, if you do apply makeup every day to go to work and do whatever, it's better that you have like a drugstore one. You save, you, you save them coins, there are some good ones out there. Um, the one that I really like, I don't think the shade ranges in the drugstore are very open and broad and like you know they have a shade for everyone i don't think that's true i just say drugstore because it's cheaper but honestly there are some really good expensive brands that have shades that will match you and that they have like nice ingredients in them like venti beauty this one's by maybelline this is a drugstore one i use this like everyday type of thing especially because it has spf 50 now it's very important to add spf to your routine whether you apply it before single-handedly or after now personally it's, it's easier to have a foundation that doesn't have any so you could use it at night too and you just add your SPF as another step in your skincare but if you want something quicker in the morning just throw on I recommend it now this is the Maybelline dream cover urban cover full coverage lightweight protective makeup it has an SPF 50 filter and an anti-pollution filter now if you live in cities that are very big and very polluted I highly recommend this because it helps your skin especially not to break out too much like you know those are like little factors that you don't think about um, sometimes and I'm really happy that they brought this out unfortunately I can't find it here in Mexico so I don't think this has launched everywhere for some reason I'm, I'm not quite sure I can't find it here in Mexico I found this at Superdrug very expensive inexpensive um, I'll link it in the description down, box down below you can order it online especially during this quarantine season that we're in I'm gonna go for this one today but I'm going to talk about the other benefits of having foundations that are also more on the high-end side um, obviously it looks nicer, this is Fenty Beauty, the Pro Matte Filter Foundation, um, the Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation, <laughs> wrong order. Um, and the benefit that this doesn't have any SPF is that when you do night makeup and you go clubbing or it's, it's some event at night, flash photography, anything that has to do with flash or bright light, 
aim for a foundation that does not have any SPF because there is this thing called flashback. Now, obviously, you probably watch other like um, YouTubers and stuff like that aside from me, and you may you may have seen like the whole flashback Mary situation with James Charles. That's a great example of what happens when your foundation and or your translucent powder causes flashbacks. Essentially, you take a photo, the flash bounces off and reflects of some ingredient that you have on your foundation or your powder and it causes you to have a white cast and look like a complete ghost, completely different to your skin when you take that photo, but if you take it without flash, you look completely fine. So yeah, try to go for things that don't have any SPF. There are a bunch of ingredients and that's more complicated, but we're trying to get to the basics here. Um, I would highly recommend just getting a foundation that you could use every day, that's good, that matches your skin tone. And that doesn't have any SPF, so you can use both morning and night. Just standard solid foundation. One good one, and you're like, yes, my go-to. For the longest time ever, my go-to, especially here in Mexico, was the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This, you see, like, my go-to still is. I fucking love it. I, would, I go back to it every now and then. But these two foundations are the more recent ones that I use. So if I were to recommend any foundations, I'd recommend these. They have, like, this is drugstore available. Not a very broad shade range. Very broad shade range, very broad shade range, decent shade range, very good quality, so, yeah, they're all good. Now, we're gonna get into undertones. Now, let me show you something. I actually have a little bit of everything today, so I can actually show you what's going on here. I wish I could have worn, like, a shirt that was more open so you could see my chest, but here we go, undertones. Now, how to pick your foundation. Um, the main issue with foundations is that it, there's, it, it gets overwhelming if it has a lot of shades you don't know. I would highly recommend for you to try this foundation. Rihanna, she's just the queen. The queen of all goddesses and everything. She's just... I love her. Who doesn't love her? If you don't love her, like, who, who even are you? Like, don't talk to me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Even though you don't like her, I really recommend her products. She has an easy way of picking out which foundation is yours? It's a lot easier, more educational. Um, I like I'll link it down below. It's an easy step because on their website they have um, kind of like a shade picker, and you kind of get more or less of which shade you'd be fitted into. I was close to this um, shade. I actually went in store and tried it myself and matched it to my neck. Now, something really important: when you match your foundation, you gotta look out for undertones. Well, these are shades, undertones of the foundation. And you gotta see it in different lighting. And if you already have a foundation that you know it looks good in every lighting and you use it as your go-to, like my baby Giorgio Armani. I actually went to the store, which is Sephora in Germany, and they had this luminous silk. This is a very like this is a tip that you know might seem obvious to you. But it's just grabbing your foundation that you, if it's in the store, store, go get your shade that you know, put the little tester, put it on the swatcher on your hand. And this is only when I'm gonna recommend your hands. Um, swatch it on your hand and then swatch different shades of your new foundation to match it to that one as closest to you gotta you do gotta wait a little bit because you gotta see for different things whether it oxidizes if it matches if it's too crispy whatever I'll get into it just in just a minute now what I was saying about undertones is after you've kind of got the shade that you want you gotta look at the undertones like one easier way that they did it like how I was taught at the beginning was to see the color of your veins so <laughs> I'm hella transparent <laughs> and as you can see you can see my obviously the vein color and how it looks and some people that this method doesn't fucking work because you can't see them so yeah this is just an easy way if you can see them it's kind of like it helps you <laughs> but you can kind of see whether your veins look greenish or bluish or in the middle between both if they look greenish it means you have a yellow undertone if they look bluish it means you have a pink undertone, a cool undertone. The yellow is like warm, you know. Get the gist. And then in between, where, so where I lie is in between. So they look bluish and greenish in like you know different ways, which means it's neutral, both bluish, greenish, cool tone, warm tone. It's in between, you know. So with those things in mind, that's kind of like an easy hack. I know this doesn't work for everyone and every skin tone. Here's one way that you can 100% figure out what kind of skin tone you are. 
So, especially when you're picking up foundations and they have the testers available. Sadly, in Mexico, they don't have testers available, so you can't do that. So it's a lot harder to match your foundations. So try to see online on the website if the different foundation range is. If you already got a go-to, then go and do the tip that I'm telling you. Try to get foundation match. I'll try to help you as much as I can. So just putting in real quickly, um, I'm using this page called Tentalia and I really quite like it. I've been using it for a long time, sometimes I forget about it, um, but I remember there was this page and you can just use an existing foundation shade that you really like and that works for you and try to find matches to it. So any brand um, that they have on the page, they have a lot of brands, this page is amazing, they have a lot of reviews and everything, so I rec highly recommend for you to check it out. Um, but as you can see, I can try and get a bunch of foundation matches and it would really help for the ones that don't have any testers available in their fingers. But one of the biggest tips is so you see the undertone. This has like a warmer uh, undertone and I like it because when it's summer I do look a lot warmer. Obviously not pinker. So this is the Fenty Beauty one I hope I don't go for So um the reason I'm matching it to my chest and not to my hand is because your other parts of your body tan a lot quicker than your neck or your chest. They, they will be naturally lighter. Um, there'll be a different shade to your face. Like my face is naturally a little bit darker than my neck. But if I were to match it only to my face, the foundation, it'll look really weird to my neck. So I have to match it to the lightest part of my skin. And then as a pale person, I have to warm it up from there. So yeah, you see this? This is a yellow, a more yellow undertone. This isn't a foundation, this is a concealer. Oh, please don't get dirty. Um, and this is very, very, very pink. Okay? So I'm trying to see the viewfinder so you see what I mean. This is a pink undertone. Now you can see the two colors right now. Okay? This is like yellow, and you can see the difference there. there. If you can't see it, then I don't know what about you. But that's very pink. Now, if I were to apply that, it would look completely off on my skin tone because I don't have a cool undertone. I'm not pink. Insert color wheel here. So, yeah, if you look at the color wheel, those are like, you know, the warmer tones, the cooler tones. So obviously, like I was saying, for darker skin tones, instead of it being pink, the foundations get more red, more orangey, and the more yellow foundations are, they do look more yellow. They stay in their yellow lane. Now, last but not least, this is quite a neutral one. Now, this last one is a Dream Urban Cover Foundation. Now, this is quite yellow. It's very it's neutral, I would say, because it's not in between these two and I quite like it so it's the one that I'm gonna be going for today um and now so you see the very very last one I don't know how I'm gonna do this without the foundation ever and now over here I'm gonna put the other one in okay so now you can see that was way off <laughs> but now you can see the different shades see how I, I stay in this lane that was way too pink and that would be a wrong shade for me um obviously it's a testing situation trial and error now that we've got our undertones down and like we've kind of like figured out more or less where we are at the undertone section and our shade section we got to move on to picking our foundation shade now let's finally finally get into the actual foundation application you know i'm gonna be using the maybelline one today because i'm pale and i've not been out in the sun at all thanks quarantine thanks coronavirus <laughs> coronavirus coronavirus i'm telling you shit is real shit is getting real for foundation application methods. Now, you could use your finger, you could use a brush, you could use a sponge. I forgot what it was called. I have different methods, so brushes, a sponge, and my fingers. Now, I don't use my fingers to blend out my foundation ever because I have nails, I don't like to do that. Um, but your fingers could be your best tool because it warms up the product and it blends it out better, but it could get a little messy, so I don't really recommend using your fingers. But if you prefer to use your fingers, go ahead, be my guest, go for it. Just be careful because it can get a little bit messy. And especially if you have nails, you don't want to poke yourself in the eye or get foundation under your nails, that's just nasty. Don't know about you, but I'd rather use tools. Obviously, you can use 
brushes. Now, I primed both of my sides of my face because it's just an essential for me. It's not like I'm not gonna prime when I put foundation on. I always, 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 always prime. You could do different things. You could apply it on the back of your hand, like so. Let's apply like that much right now. Should be enough for my face, but we'll, go, we'll see. And you could warm it up with your finger a little bit. You can do the thing of applying it with your finger on your face like this and just kind of like blending it out like I do. This is what I usually do. Um, and just apply it on your face like that. And then blend it with a sponge. Now I like to use damp sponges like these. Not these makeup sponges because these are like, you know, the, the disposable ones. I don't like using these. I don't recommend these for that. So it's, if you have this and you want to use it, I mean, go ahead and try, but you're not going to get the nice finish that you're looking for. So, going in with this sponge, I'm literally just tapping, dabbing slightly, and be gentle with your face. I'm quite harsh on it because I'm kind of used to it and I can do it blindly, but yeah. I blend it and it's very easy to blend. Always, 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 oh, the sponge must be dabbed. Because if the if the sponge is dry and you try to bend out your foundation, it's just gonna look weird and cakey. You might as well use the brush. Um, you could try and do that for a different effect, but we're trying to get this look done. You know? This other method of application could be with a paddle brush. Now you could get the most full coverage using a paddle brush, and you just like I said, you put it on your hand, you drag a little bit of product, and you just like lay it on top of your skin. Then I go with my sponge and blend it out like that. Um, I'm going to blend this section with the sponge, so you see what I mean. And it's quite easy, you can do that and get more full coverage. Now what this does with the sponge, it does soak up a bunch of foundation compared to brushes, that's one thing that you got to know. And to the beauty sponge, it pushes the product onto the skin and it makes the finish a lot more smoother, that's what the first one is. With brushes, you get more high coverage. It doesn't because it doesn't soak up as much product onto your tool, onto the brush, right? So you apply it, and then you can blend it out with a sponge, like I said, dab it like that. Or what you could do is grab a um, buffing brush and buff it into your skin, or stamp it, or stipple it onto your skin, whichever way you want to call it. So you could do this, and I'm just using the Morphe M439 brush. It's a great brush for this method if you prefer it. This is a Morphe sponge as well and this is a Blossom foundation paddle brush. You can use any paddle brush. Paddle brushes are so common out there. Um, I got this one here in Mexico so um, yeah, to be honest. I do have foundation brushes at home but I just simply use this. So yeah, you could do this but then you get like brush strokes and you get a higher coverage, yeah, but in the end you're going to want to go in with the sponge and do that again. So it depends on the look that you're going for. Last but not least, what you could do is I'm gonna, um, I've used most of the foundation up already. So what you could do is grab a stippling brush and this is the one that has the two types of fibers in. It keeps the product up at the top and then the bottom bristles blend it out. It's a more lightweight application, more natural finish. You could use it like that. See how the product stays on top of the brush like this. So now what you could do is just Stip it onto your skin and just start blending it out in circular motion. Start blending that out. And there you go. It's like a little more like lightweight. It's very easy to do. And if you want to go for a more natural neat look, um, you could definitely do that. So now for the method that I always use, it's my finger. Apply it all over the place like this. I have a higher coverage on this cheek. So I'm going to try even that out. And I sometimes use the paddle brush to pick up the remaining foundation and just, you know, put it everywhere. Never forget to blend the foundation down your neck, ladies and gentlemen. Never, ever, 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 ever forget to do that because however well you might have think you have matched your foundation there's still a slight chance that the foundation may oxidize which means it has ingredients that can make the foundation go a different color slightly darker or anything so you're not quite sure until you wear it and your skin warms up the product and it dries down so you see it um actually the fenty foundation oxidizes it 
Oopsie fucking daisy. It oxidizes a little tiny bit, and I'll show you that in a minute once I finish applying it. So yeah, this is what I usually do. I use a sponge to blend out my foundation. I like the finish a lot better. It's a lot cleaner, but it does soak up a lot more product, and I waste more product inside the sponge. But I prefer the finish. Now obviously you can see that I'm getting a lot paler, like I said, most of the time it's just the lighting because if I were to turn it down right now, you'd see like more of a natural lighting how I look but it's just so you see everything I'm in a very dark room, you guys, even though I have the light on, it looks crazy I like to, I personally like to blend the remaining foundation onto like my lids and everything so I don't put as much, as much concealer on, but that's a whole other step that's a whole other thing, concealing, you know? What I wanted to show you with the Fenty foundation, oxidation. Uh, it depends on the ingredients that are in the foundation. And this is more specifics. I, I'm not going to get into it too much. Because um, then we'll be here for ages. We're already here for ages, but we'll be here for longer. So what I mean with oxidation is you put a pump there. And let me just spread it out for you guys to see. And this is fresh pump foundation on the skin. Shiny. We're gonna let it dry and we're gonna come back to it in a little bit. Let, let, let me be, let me be RB. Let me be RB, you know, burp. BRB, BRB, BRB. We got the effect that I wanted. Okay, so now the foundation is quite dry and I'm going to show you what I mean by oxidation. You put a fresh pump next to it and it looks a lot lighter. This, I mean, yeah, the fresh pump. The, the, the set pump, the one that's dried out, looks a lot darker. And that's exactly what I mean. Now, this foundation is amazing, but you do got to take it into consideration. So if this happens with the foundation and you want it to match you exactly after it sets, then you could go down half a shade or a shade. It depends on the shade ranges and how many they have, but I'd recommend going down a shade because it's going to oxidize to your real shade once it sets. Now, it also depends on your setting powder and everything's a little bit more complicated, but even though this is darker and it looks a lot darker compared to my skin, I wear it, I blend it out, and because I use like bronzer and I warm up my face and everything and I use like a light setting powder, in the end it evens out and it works perfectly fine for me. But you just gotta keep an eye out for these types of foundations because it may happen. Now, another thing that I felt to mention with foundations and everything, there are other stuff out there like cushion foundations and BB creams and stick foundations and cream foundations and there's a bunch of stuff that may be overwhelming. I showed you the basics like you know the standard liquid foundation 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 um but obviously you have stick foundations for example this one this is the infallible L'Oreal Infallible stick sculpted foundation this I don't use as a foundation I actually use as like a bronzer slash contour product so yeah you can have a lot of these and obviously the technique and everything's different I could teach you how to use different foundations and how to apply them like different like forms of foundations with stick foundation a cushion foundation the difference between BB creams and CC creams um, and like how they look on the skin. I can do that in another video, but that's like a lot and I feel like that'd be going way too in depth Um, because that's like a whole other thing. So I just stuck to the standard foundation things Foundation things foundation So yeah, I mean aside from stick foundations that they come in a stick form and they're a lot creamier and thicker Um and more full coverage and So then there are the BB creams and the CC creams which have a lot lighter coverage um, the BB cream stands for beauty balm and the CC cream stands for color correcting balm or correcting um, cream, something like that. Um, correcting cream if I'm not mistaken. So beauty balms have a lot more um, coverage onto them and there's also a tinted moisturizer area which is a whole other thing too because it's kind of like in the skincare dabbling, dabbling their toes and fingernails into the makeup world. Um, but to stick to the BB cream, the BB cream have a little bit more full coverage they tend to be kind of like a very light version of foundation like very 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 light it's just kind of like a hue and then the correcting creams are they usually target like if you've got um a redness if you've got a like really red skin um and you want to kind of correct it for an everyday type of thing but you don't want to go all the way to foundation you would go for cc cream um that would kind of correct it, it has a bit of color in it and it does what it says it corrects it so whatever issue that you're facing and then the whole tinted moisturizer is literally what it is, a tinted moisturizer. So it has a slight pigment to it. Nothing that you can really see to the eye, like you can't see it. If I have any around me, 
I'd show you, but I don't have any BBCC cream because I like I'm more of a medium to full coverage gal, you know? Like, because I can make medium coverages lighter. I can make medium to full coverages very full coverage. So that's what I usually go for in a foundation. But yeah, but yeah, essentially this foundation is wrapped up. I know I've been rambling for ages and ages and ages, but there's a lot of do's and don'ts and what to do and how to, and it's overwhelming because it's your skin and you don't want to look like an oompa loompa, but you don't want to look like a ghost. But at the same time, you're looking like all weird and crusty and hard and you're like, why am I looking like this? Why is my skin going so crusty and cakey? I don't like foundation. And other people get scared of using foundation because they don't really know where they're going with it. So I hope this video helped. If I missed out on anything and you have any questions, please comment down below. Let me know. Ask your questions, suggestions, anything. And I'll, I, I promise I answer every single comment that goes on my channel. So don't worry. I'll answer you. But... Aside from that, yeah, but without rambling on and on and on, this is basically a foundation how to Tuesday video. How to Tuesday foundation video. But aside from rambling on and on and on, um, this is the foundation info wrapped down to a T. Like, this is what we want to know. So, does it. Let me put the rest of my makeup on and I'll come back and say hello because I don't know what that did. So, I finished doing my makeup and this is the extravagant look that you saw at the beginning of the video, as you saw. And I'm just here to say thank you so much for watching if you made it all the way over here to the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments, anything you want to say, please leave it down below and I'll respond to you guys. Um, don't forget to check the description box down below for any of the products that I used and any suggestions that I have. I really hope this helps and if I missed out on anything, please don't hesitate to let me know or if I got anything wrong that you find wrong, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching give it a thumbs up don't forget and if you haven't subscribed and you haven't become part of this family this weird family here we're three subscribers away from 200 like i'm waiting for these three beautiful people that want to join me and my weird ass self and become part of this family please subscribe <laughs> if, if you're someone that you're, you're watching this video and you you know you haven't subscribed and you're, you're watching it just click subscribe you know i'd really appreciate it Anyway, um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!